I am Sean Tan, Field Application Scientist from 10X Genomics. And today I'll be using this 15 minutes or so to give an introduction on one of our newer product, Vision Gene Expression Solution. First, a little introduction on 10X Genomics. 10X was found on the vision that this century we, we will be able to bring advances in biomedicine and transform the way we understand and treat diseases. With this vision in mind, at 10X Genomics, we build products to interrogate, understand, and master biology to advance human health at a resolution and scale that matches the complexity of biology. This means that we would like to understand biology at a single cell level. So over the past five years, 10X has launched a series of single cells application, including single cell gene expression, single cell immune profiling solution, and of course, single cell ATEX seed solution for epigenomic studies. We have also enabled multiple, uh, sorry, multimodal studies using feature barcoding for cell surface protein, CRISPR profiling, as well as antigen specificity. All this is to enable our customers to make innovative as well as fundamental discoveries across multiple research areas, including but not limited to cancer, immunology, and neuroscience. At the end of 2019, we launched our first spatial gene expression solution on Vision Platform, which we call it, or we can refer it as spatial transcriptomics. So what does spatial transcriptomics mean? Spatial transcriptomics is the term used to describe technologies assaying gene expression at the RNA level while preserving the valuable spatial context, which is the spatial information of the data. To put it simply, it is to know where in a sample, where, where the gene expression is located in a sample with its location known. These techniques is different from the standard bulk RNA-seq or the single cell RNA experiment, RNA-seq experiment, whereby spatial information is often lost. For some scientists, spatial assays are not uncommon, such as the in-situ hybridization experiments, which actually tells you where does the single gene location is expressed uh, in, the, in the tissue itself. However, this is limited to either one or a couple of genes. It is, does not give you the information of the whole transcriptome. Using food as an example, spatial transcriptomics can be likened to the arrangement of fruits on a fruit tart that you can see here, where you will be able to identify the location of each of the fruit slices that has been placed and prepared from individual fruit type. So if you will see where's the black currant, you'll be able to see where's the mandarin orange or the kiwi that's located there. If you only to look at the basic cell structure without any locality, we can end up with different results by inferring with the cell types detected. Such as in this case, if we were to look at the single fruits under this single cells category, we can only tell what are the cell types, what are the fruits that's been used to make the tart. However, when it comes to bulk sequencing, we do get the volume of data that can be generated, but it's at the loss of resolution as well as spatial information. We found the resolution at single cell level or the spatial information. It is hard to grasp the whole picture, such as in the case of this smoothie, which is on the image on the right side. Can we tell whether we do get that bit of blueberries that the waiter has promised us that is in the smoothie? With recent technology advancement, we have gone from bulk measurements to high resolution studies, such as at in single cell level or at multi-omics levels, or 10x it will be with the feature barcoding technology. And this is to, to answer fundamental questions in biology. And now with spatial technology, you can start adding spatial context to your molecular data for a more comprehensive view of biology. 
So why is knowing where helpful? Well, I like to always give this as an example. It is like buying a house. Location is important. So on this slide, it shows um, the location of tumor infiltrating lymphocyte or tubes is um, in in two tumor samples that's been stained with H and E stains, and with the corresponding G expression patterns that is shown on the right side. In the top sample, where you can see the lymphocytes infiltrating into the tumor, typically if the doctor was to see this data set, they were able to um, to tell whether the prognosis is good or not. So for this patient, it will say the cancer, the treatment may be working with the lymphocyte infiltrating into the tumor core. However, when it comes to the bottom sample, whereby the tumor, whereby the lymphocytes are still present, it is still available, but knowing the location gives you a different prognosis because these lymphocytes are stopped at the tumor boundary such that it means that the prognosis will be poor. So as you can see, knowing, being able to distinguish the location of these lymphocytes requires spatial data, and it helps with clinical prognosis for this cancer patient uh, as an example. Through spatial transcriptomics, gene expression data can be overlaid onto a histological image, which is the H&E stain shown here, and it helps to retain, uh, by retaining the tissue organization and cellular microenvironment, which can be combined with the gene expression information to give a better comprehensive uh, information to the biology that we are seeing here. Therefore, at 10x, to deliver innovative tools that can accelerate research and discovery, we deliver the Vision Spatial Gene Expression Solution with an end-to-end -end solution featuring a streamlined workflow. With this solution, we can now obtain unbiased gene expression profiling for intact tissue section from a wide range of tissue types. And it helps to unravel biological architecture in normal tissues and disease tissue while maintaining the spatial information thus enabling true discovery. Vision is compatible with fresh frozen tissue embedded in OCT, uh, which is optimal cutting temperature compound. For now, we are developing on um, a FFPE protocol. And recently we do have a collaborator who has actually published uh, using FFPE sample on Vision Kit. However, that is a customer developed protocol. Um, feel free to um, evaluate as well as exploit and perhaps conduct pilot runs with FFP sample. Currently, uh, from 10X, Vision Gene Expression Solution is compatible only with fresh frozen tissue embedded in OCT. And finally, we provide a turnkey analysis software and visualization tool for free. So the value of Vision solution is to enable is an unbiased solution to enable true discovery as mentioned in the earlier slide here is a list of tissues that we have tested successfully in-house by our r d team these tissues include samples from mice as well as from human and this list is not exhaustive we do have an updated list uh, on our website, which may which uh, we are also looking into other species such as rat and zebrafish. Even in the midst of this current pandemic, our team of 10x scientists continues to uh, look into various tissue types uh, with the vision solution. And this list does not include the magnitude or the multitude of other tissues and diseases that has been tested by our collaborators and current customers. The Vision Spatial Gene Expression Solution is designed with optimization of tissue in mind. This is because there are so many types of tissues and species uh, that researchers like to work on. 
everyone research focus, model species are all different. Therefore, we have uh, two types of kits, which is the tissue optimization kit as well as the gene expression kits that are intended to be run sequentially. So this is the vision spatial tissue optimization kit. And here are the information that you can provide. So as the name has mentioned, the tissue optimization kit is to determine the best tissue permeabilization time for each tissue type, regardless whether it's coming from different organs, different species, or even different disease state, the permeabilization time can be different. Therefore, we strongly recommend whenever you decide to actually execute the, uh, the vision solution, do test out the, the tissue type or your samples with the tissue optimization kit using one tissue type and same section thickness per TO slide before proceeding on to the gene expression slides. The slides on the tissue optimization kit are coated with a lot of non barcoded oligos for cDNA synthesis. They do not contain any spatial information. It is used only for determining the best or the optimal permeabilization time that's required for the RNA that is uh, in your tissue to be released and captured uh, on, onto the oligos that is coated on the slides. On the other hand, the vision spatial gene expression solution generates spatially resolved gene expression data from an individual tissue section. The released mRNA is captured with spatially barcoded oligos on the slide. The cDNA is synthesized and then collected for library construction. At the end of the day, at the end of the workflow, this will result in a sequenceable library from each captured area. To, en to ensure that we capture the spatial information, H and E staining is performed on the tissue prior to capturing of mRNA. And this image is used subsequently during data analysis to visualize gene expression in the original tissue contact. So in this slide, it shows a very high level overview of the gene expression slide workflow. The workflow begins by placing a cryosection tissue on the capture area of the gene expression slide. The tissue is then fixed with metanol, stained with HNE stains, and image uh, using bright field imaging to capture the spatial information which will be used subsequently during data analysis to combine the gene expression data onto the spatial information. Once uh, bright field imaging has been completed, this is the beginning of generating the sequenceable library, whereby the CDN you will undergo um, permeabilization to release the mRNA from the tissues, and mRNA will be captured by the barcoded oligos that is coated on the on the uh, gene expression slide in each captured area. During the barcoding and library construction, the cDNA is amplified and finally uh, a sequenceable library will be constructed and this uh, library will be compatible on any Illumina sequencer. Data analysis is performed using our software pipeline, which is the Space Ranger M Loop Browser. So the key of the vision technology is explained on this slide. As shown here on the left, the vision spatial gene expression slide contains four captured areas. Each of these capture area uh, will allow you to place a tissue uh, uh, into, into it. So each gene expression slide will allow you to perform uh, gene, spatial gene expression and uh, experiment for up to four samples. Each of these capture area measures 6.5 mm by 6.5 mm. Within the capture area, it contains 4,992, approximately 5,000 barcoded spots. 
that and they here each of these spots are represented by dots of different colors each of this spot is 55 micron in diameter with the center to center distance between spot uh, at 100 micron Now we look at each individual spot, we will be able to see that each spot is made up of a high density lawn or specially barcoded probe that will contain the following uh, structure uh, design for the oligo, which is a partial true seat adapter, a sexting based spatial barcode that is unique to each spot. Therefore, uh, as represented here by the colors of the spot, each of these spot will contain different spatial barcode sequence on the oligo. Flow, following with, it is a series of 12 nucleotide UMI, which stand for Unique Molecular Identifier, which is unique to each probe or each oligo. And last but not least, the 30 poly DT region that hybridize to the mRNA. To complete the workflow, as a 10x tradition, we offer turnkey analysis software. Uh, for the analysis software, we call it the Space Ranger. And visualization software, which is called the Loop Browser. For the most current software version, please visit our 10x website, and these software are available to download without any cost. The Space Ranger is an automated data image processing pipeline. It performs clustering analysis based on gene expression. They are also provide question, uh, actionable QC statistics. As for the Loop Browser, as for the Loop Browser, it, uh, it allows you to view spot clusters and express genes in the context of tissue images man, uh, and perform manual alignment. Last but not least, it also allows uh, performing interactive data visualization and exploration. While this software may not fulfill all the analysis that you may want to do, it can be an immediate solution to provide a preliminary visualization of your spatial data. Once you have QC your data, you can consider alternative tools such as Partech to perform further analysis. Due to today's time constraint, I will quickly share some new updates on our software. So we have currently released new versions for Space Ranger and Loop Browser, which is Space Ranger 1.1 and Loop Browser 4.1. The update includes a faster processing speed as well as uh, supports immunofluorescent channel visualization. So that will bring me to some of the uh, screenshots or the GIF file that will show you how it supports immunofluorescent channel visualization, whereby you can actually select to turn on or off the immunofluorescent markers that you have, uh, it, you have used on your tissue sample. It also allows you to choose the region of interest to focus on, with an improvement on the spot selection tool, this is actually my personal uh, favorite improvement. It allows you to simply just use the, the brush and paint the spots that you're interested in uh, for analysis as well as grouping them together for down, uh, downstream analysis. Previously, we were only using rectangular uh, selection tool or the lasso tool, which may be a bit challenging uh, for someone without a mouse. So as you can see, with the improvement of on our soft, soft, uh, our new software release, 10X do also want to continue to um, have more applications on the vision platform. For now, we have uh, also recently released a demonstrator protocol for combining immunofluorescent data with gene expression data on the vision platform. So shown here is a mouse brain that has been stained with three different fluorescent dyes or antibodies that targets neurons, glial cells, and nuclei. The Darby staining nucle nuclei 
and a new N, which is a neuronal uh, biomarker, and GFAP, GFAP, a marker for astrocytes glial cells that is shown here. Using the vision gene expression data, we can actually select the new N uh, gene expression from the transcriptome, which is your gene expression data, and at the same time, select the GFAP data from the, from the gene expression transcriptomic data too. And you can see what happens when we actually combine the data from immunofluorescent stain data, which is the new N antibody and the GFAP antibody shown here, that they correlate uh, strongly uh, when you compare the transcriptional level or, or the transcriptional expression with the protein expression here. So here's another example that shows you the, the relationship of the protein and gene expression on the same tissue type. The T cell expressed uh, in red and not expressed as the spots, the spatial uh, spots as uh, blue. So as part of the development process, we are always looking for ways to improve as well as to add on to the visions uh, resolution, the scale, as well as accessibility. So, and one of the requests which is commonly uh, requested by our current user is the ability to reset the slides after an incorrect tissue placement, which is a critical upstream component for Visium, that is to place the tissue section of your samples onto the captured areas of the slide accurately. Typically, using a cryostat, a section is generated, and then we actually adhere it onto the slide within the captured area. But this process can be tedious, and with so many um, techniques involved, mistakes can happen. So you may catch sometimes whereby the tissue sections are placed out of the box, folded, or may, maybe end up with too big. There could be some uh, producer frames that has been covered. And it's not as so easy as a typical uh, histological workflow whereby you can just simply just clean off the tissue by rubbing some regions on the tissue because there are oligos present on the surface of this capture area. So therefore, we develop a demonstrator protocol for removing the tissue and resetting the slide whereby you could resection your section and then replace it onto the capture area before proceeding on with the spatial protocol, whether it is tissue optimization protocol or whether it is the gene expression protocol. So the demonstrable protocol is currently available on 10x support website. So in this slide, I just want to show you um, how effective is the tissue res uh, is the is this protocol is when we perform the slide reset. Initially, we actually paste uh, put a, a mouse a mouse tissue in a captured area, and then subject it to the slide reset protocol, whereby we remove the mouse tissue. Thereafter, we section the human tissues and add it onto the same captured area. With that, we generate the library, and we are able to successfully show that the reset, the post reset, uh, the human sample that is on the post reset slide, is able to achieve similar data or number of medium genes per spot as that uh, when it's placed on a fresh slide. That's shown here. So these are the additional data from the mice, from the mouse brain, and the reset data that is shown here, there is no overlapping of the data. To end off, Tenet has a number of resources that is available on our website for the demonstrated protocol that I've mentioned earlier, which include the immunofluorescent staining with vision platform, 
as well as the slide reset demonstrator protocol. These are also available on our website uh, at our support site. There are a number of data specific uh, analysis specific to 10x webinar, which you can um, download or view it online for all these uh, customer speakers webinar. Additionally, we have recently launched a number of getting started tutorials on our support website. Or not, um, do not uh, hesitate. Feel free to actually reach out to us if you have any questions uh, on your workflow as well as your data analysis. And on this last slide, thank you for your time. Hi, this is Ivan speaking. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on your time zone. I wish you a very warm welcome to this presentation on analysis of 10x genomics Visium data in Partec flow. I will start by a brief introduction to Partec. After that, I will give an overview of Partec Flow, our analysis solution for multiomics, and finish by a live demo of analysis of Visium data. Partec is a software company with more than 25 years of experience in data analysis and pattern recognition. Our key product is Partec Flow, a comprehensive and powerful genomic analysis platform. When creating Partec Flow, we had different types of users in mind, biologists, bioinformaticians, and large organizations, and we included a wide range of functionalities to meet their respective requirements. With Partec Flow, there is no need for command line or knowledge of a programming language. All the analysis are performed using point and click interface. In addition to our own algorithms, Partec Flow ships with a number of commonly used tools, and you can also add your own tools or scripts. You will also find user and data management as well as the resource management tools in Partec Flow. Finally, we recently added data repository functionality. Here is just a small example of our charts. All the plots can be extensively modified and then downloaded to our local computer as an image file. In terms of assays, we support a wide range of omics applications, genomics and proteomics alike. You can analyze your data in Partec Flow from start to finish. To begin with, you can import your BCL files, your FASTQ files, or your count matrix files. In addition, we support CERA objects. Following import, you can proceed to any downstream steps. For example, perform QC, batch correction, interact with the data, cluster the data, perform differential gene expression, or path analysis. That concludes this brief overview of Partec Flow, and I will now move forward and introduce the webinar dataset. The data that I'm using in this presentation is public, released by 10x Genomics. Briefly, fresh frozen mouse tissue was processed adhering to the Visium Spatial Protocol, and the brains were cut into 10 micrometer thick sagittal slices. Initial data processing was done using the Space Ranger pipeline of 10x Genomics, output of which was then imported directly into Partec Flow. During the demo, we are going to use a lateral view on the slices. That's the one on the right-hand side. And the biological question is, can we detect differences in gene expression between the anterior and the posterior brain cortex? This is Partec Flow. We are looking at the data viewer, our visualization and analysis platform. I'm showing the anterior brain slice. The dots that you see on the plots are the tissue spots and they're colored by a clustering result. I will tell you more about clustering in just a few moments. Now, as I decrease the opacity of the dots using the slider on the left-hand side over here, we actually move from transcriptomics to histology. Or back from histology to transcriptomics. And this is what integration of spatial and expression data looks like. This image is just a part of my analysis, so I will zoom out to show you the entire data viewer session. The data viewer session consists of four plots, and as you will see shortly, they're all connected. 
the goal of this project is to compare the expression patterns in the anterior and the posterior cortex, and this is what the two plots at the bottom represent. Anterior one, the one that I have already shown you, and then the posterior one on the right. The cortical regions are highlighted. Now, up here, there's a volcano plot. Let me blow it up. And the volcano highlights the genes that are differentially expressed between the anterior and the posterior slice. Upregulated genes in red, downregulated genes in green. And this is basically the answer to my biological question. These are the genes that are differentially expressed um, with respect to their positioning in the, in the cortex. Okay, zooming out. In this example, I'm comparing anterior versus posterior brain slice, but in your project, you may want to compare something else like a wild type versus mutant tissue. It's really up to you. In addition, you are not limited to samples. You can add as many as you like. Let me now take you over the steps of my analysis. I'm going to start with the UMAP since it's a common tool for exploratory analysis. By default, we show it in 3D and it is fully interactive. You can rotate it, you can pan around, you can zoom in or zoom back out. So on the UMAP, each data point is a, is a tissue spot. I perform graph-based clustering upstream of the UMAP and the clusters are highlighted by color. I will add the legend. The legend doesn't have to be positioned over here in the upper right. You can move it around wherever you like. As I said, all our tools are very flexible. Let me send it back to the docking position. Now the UMAP was invoked on the full data set, both slices, and I will now add that information to the plot. The plot controls are here on the left, and I'm going to explore the data card first, this one over here. The data card is a graphical overview of my analysis. I started with this point over here, single cell counts, which is the output of Cell Ranger. By mousing over a data node, we get the thumbnail with a preview of Partec Flow pipeline, which is running in the background. Alternatively, by clicking on the node, we see the available data attributes that can be used for analysis or visualization. Okay, I'm going to use sample name for plotting, drag and drop to the canvas. I'm going to split the UMAP. So here we go, anterior slice or tissue spots in the anterior slice on the left and tissue spots from the posterior slice on the right. The plots are connected. When you rotate one, the other one will follow. Say I made a mistake here. I didn't really want to split by sample name, no problem. That's why we have multiple step undo button. Here we go. The plots are joined again. Okay, I will add the same, same information. So the sample name, but in a different way. Drag, and this time I'm going to land on size, meaning I'm going to size by sample name. To the large data points are from posterior slice and small data points are from the anterior slice. To highlight this point, I'm going to customize the data point size, something like this. Yeah, maybe go even a little bit lower. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, and now you can clearly see it. By taking a closer look, we see that some clusters for instance, this green one, appear only in one part of the brain, all the dots are of the same size, while some other clusters, I'm going to rotate this, like the orange one, they appear, they are present in both anterior and the posterior part of the brain. 
If you want to highlight this message, the distribution of clusters across the brain, there is another way of doing that. Let me show you. I will now zoom out of the UMAP and I'm going to replace it by, I'm going to replace the volcano, we don't need it anymore, by another plot. The data that I want to show is my clustering result. On the data card, we have a search box. I just start typing. So here's my graph-based clustering. Okay, I'm going to use that for plotting and replace the volcano. It's going to be replaced by a 2D scatter plot. Zoom in and then customize the axes. Graph-based clustering result again, available attributes. I'm going to put the clusters on the horizontal axis, again, drag and drop, and then the sample name on the vertical axis. Here we go. And for the final touch, I'm going to add some color to it. Yes, and now we can clearly see that some clusters are present in both anterior and the posterior slice, for instance, the blue one, while the distribution of some clusters, like this green one, is much more restricted. In addition, please note that Bartek Flow automatically performed the chi-square test for me to compare the distribution of tissue spots across the regions. Okay, zoom back out. We are still going to talk about clusters. Whenever you perform classification in Partec Flow, and clustering is form of classification, Partec Flow will provide a list of cluster-specific biomarkers. Now let's add a biomarker table to the data viewer session. Going back to the data tab, this is my graph-based clustering result. Replace the 2D scatter plot, and I want to replace it by a table. And here we go, here are my biomarkers. Let's add some more space. And I'm going to start by looking at cluster number one. The top marker is a gene set B2 here. The data table is connected with other plots. For instance, let's color the UMAP by the expression levels of set B2. Drag and then drop on green. The color range is from black, no expression, or green, high expression levels of set B2, and it's easy to spot the set B2 expressing tissue spots. Now, where is this in the tissue? Where are these spots in the tissue? No problem. Drag, and this time drop on the slices, one, and then the other one. The tissue spots expressing the current gene are now highlighted and we see that those tissue spots are in the brain cortex. Since spatial transcriptomics um, merges both expression and tissue information, it enables us to maximize the information gained from our result. For example, if you go back to the graph-based clustering table, SETB2 is not expressed, or it's not only a marker of cluster one, it's all also a marker of cluster three. Let's interpret this. To start with, I'm going to open the selection panel on the left hand side and then select but my clustering results. The clusters that I want to focus on now are clusters one and three. Please note that all the available information is connected. So if I turn the select the cluster one off and on, the corresponding tissue spots are selected and deselected on the on the UMAP and on the tissue slices. So cluster one is actually superficial cortex, while cluster three corresponds to deep cortical layers. This makes sense. SETB2 is a transcription factor and it differentially turns on genes from the upper layers and turns down genes from lower layers. Okay, now, second gene, 
GM11549, drag and drop, but using a different color this time. Let's go for red over here, here, and here. Notice that the legend now goes from green to red, while yellow tissue spots express ball genes. GM11549 is a predicted gene and not much is known about it. However, what we can learn from this analysis is first, where exactly in the brain is this gene expressed? And second, what is the expression court, uh, context? What other genes are co-expressed with GM11549? Next step, a third gene, EPOP, which is a regulator of neuronal differentiation. I'm going to add it to UMAP, use blue this time. And the color legend is now a triangle. I'm going to zoom in again. The, the colored tissue spots express at least one or maybe more out of those three markers. I have already shown you how to select tissue spots by cluster, remember. Here, selection by clustering result. And now here is another way, using our flexible 3D lasso tool, you just circle around the spots that you would like to select. Okay, those same tissue spots are now added to the legend. A feature that I find very handy is that the legend is also a selection tool. Say I want to focus only on the tissue spots co-expressing set B2 and EPOP, these ones over here. I'm going to circle around them directly on the legend and now they are selected on the main plot. I may want to isolate my selected tissue spots from the bulk of the data, no problem. Filtering card again and then include selected points and only those are now presented. That was easy, right? Clear the filter. Three genes at the same NICE is useful, but you may want to use more than three to identify expression signatures of some tissue spots. Bartek flow supports gene lists, and this is what I'm going to show you next. I'm going to color the UMAP by a gene list. First, for plotting, I don't want to use the UMAP coordinates, but I want to use the gene expression levels. Therefore, I'm going to change the data source by clicking on the data point over here. Source for plotting are going to be my filtered counts, and then I'm going to color by a feature list. Let's have a closer look. Bartek flow comes pre-populated with about 100 lists of cell markers which we downloaded from the literature. You can also use your custom lists. As an, ex as an example, I imported a list of 20 Parkinji cell markers. Let me just start typing Parkinji, there we go. The metric that I'm using for plotting is the sum, that is tissue spots are colored by the sum of those 20 markers. Let me rotate this. Here's an interesting cell population, this H-shaped one. These spots are in bright red, indicating that they encompass Parkinji cells. However, you may argue that the difference between these spots, although they do form a very well-defined and separate cluster, and the rest of the data is not that obvious. No problem. Let's use another metric. Instead of the sum, I will just simply switch to PCA. When you switch to PCA, what we do under the hood is we take the original markers, and run a PCA on them, and then color the chart by the first three PCs. Basically, we create three metagenes. The first PC is the most informative one. Its color in, 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 is green, and then the same tissue spots in this H-shaped population are now in different shades of green and the difference versus the rest of the, of the data body is now very well pronounced. 
How about the sanity check? If these tissue spots over here really contain Purkinje cells, then they should be in the cerebellum. I'm going to select them, this time using a polygon tool, just like doing flow cytometry gating. Here we go, they are selected, and now zoom out. Let's look at the posterior slice. The same tissue spots are selected and they are right in the cerebellum. I'm going to quickly customize it, going full screen, then apply the same color scheme. I'm coloring by expression counts using a feature list. These are going to be my Purkinje cells. The metric is PCA and perhaps increase the dot slice a little bit. Even a little bit more. Yeah, and the Purkinje layer of cerebellum then lights up. By modulating the opacity, we can double check the actual localization. Again, a direct merge between histology and transcriptomics. Let's zoom back out. I will now show you how to classify tissue spots. First, I'm going to increase the slices and then color all the charts by the graph-based clustering result. They just drag and drop color drag and drop color, one more color, okay? My clusters are already added to the selection card and I will pick the ones that I'm interested in. These are the ones that align to brain cortex. The cortical clusters are one, three, and nine. Okay, those tissue spots are now selected. One last step is that I need to label them. That, that's why what we use this classify selection button for. I have already done that. I have labeled them as cortical clusters and there are some 1600 of them. In the next step, I use this information to build a statistical model and I compare the anterior versus the posterior cortex. So this is now my gene table, my stat result, genes on rows and on the columns, I see the p-value and the fall change. Now these two columns, that is p-value and fall change, can be quickly visualized using the volcano plot. Let's bring it up, here's the volcano icon. And this is my volcano. It's also fully interactive, just a quick an example. On the right-hand side, we see three highly significant genes. Let's able them directly on the chart. First select by using a polygon, why not? And then once they're selected, I'm going to switch to the plot controls, labeling and label those genes by gene name. Okay, easy. Back to the table. On the left-hand side, there is a filter panel with different criteria which can be combined to come up with a list of significant genes. Those genes can then be subjected to biological interpretation, for instance, pathway enrichment. Let me show you that. This is the most significant pathway in the current study. That was the ligand receptor interaction. And it makes sense since different brain regions use different signaling pathways. Significant genes are highlighted by fault change, upregulated genes in red, downregulated genes in green. Okay, since I'm talking about the genes, one more uh, gene-centric visualization, going back to the table. Another available plot is the dot plot. So I'm going to pick a highly significant gene, HTR2A, it's a serotonin receptor. To visualize the expression levels, click on the dot plot icon. 
and then the data viewer comes up again. Quick customization first, I don't want to see all the tissue spots, only the cortical ones, no problem. Selection by a region, and then select cortex, include selected data points. So only cortical tissue spots. Let's customize some more. First, I'm going to transform it into a violin chart. Here on the summary card, add violins. While I'm at it with another switch, we just add colors, and it's also easy to overlay the data points over the violins. Right, okay. So, we, I have already shown you biological interpretation, which can be considered a possible endpoint of analysis of this project. As you recall, I started with Space Ranger data. I used different exploratory techniques in Partic Flow, identified my regions of interest, then I performed statistical analysis, generated a list of significant genes, and switched to biological interpretation. Full circle with just a few mouse clicks. I'm also happy to mention that Partic Flow supports spatial multiomics by 10x genomics. Here is another project showing integration of protein and gene expression data with tissue data. Finally, I will quickly show you a recent feature which our customers highly appreciate, that is the search portal. The search portal allows me to search my own projects or public data sets which we made available through Partic Flow. I will look for everybody's favorite gene these days. That's, of course, ACE2. Search for it. It's here in the gene table. The data po points are not genes, but all the projects in which this gene appears. I can immediately identify the projects in which ACE2 was significant. These are the ones in color, for instance, upregulated in red. And in addition, we see the species on which this experiment was performed. One last message, we have free trials of all our packages and to apply for a free trial, please kindly visit our webpage. Thank you so much for your attention.